Hey guys, welcome back to LJ's Kitchen. I am your host, Tamika Miles. I'm here with my son, Shaquille Rankin. Shaquille Sean Rankin, what's up with you? What's up, me? <laughs> These guys are so different. Uh, earlier in the show, we had my son, Dominique Damar Rankin in, and now we have uh, Shaquille here. So uh, we are gonna make twice baked potatoes. We're gonna talk, but I wanna get started. And I have some olive oil and butter back here um and i think it's just about ready and i'm going to add my shrimp in i'm going to add my garlic first so i have elephant garlic i have um huge spuds usually i have them a little bit bigger than this but these are idaho potatoes they were oiled down poked with a fork uh gently and baked in the oven for an hour until they were fork tender i split them in half uh we have sour cream milk cheddar cheese and pepper jack cheese and i have a house seasoning right here for our baked potatoes okay so if you also hear like a little noise in the background it's my granddaughter it's dominique's daughter and uh i guess i'm still kind of babysitting while i'm taping this show so i'm just going to dice up this elephant garlic this is a huge garlic it costs a lot too I think um, this, and the reason why I said it costs a lot, so don't be surprised when you go to the supermarket and see how much, because this is only one little bulb, big bulb. Um, so I sliced it horizontally, and then I sliced it vertically, and now I'm going back to slice it so that we can get an, a dice out of it. And this is this, called what? This is elephant garlic. Yeah, it's pretty big. It's a, a little milder than regular garlic. regular garlic so i thought it was good for these potatoes i like garlic but sometimes i would probably like garlic a little too much okay I feel like that's like with butter you can never have too much garlic you can never we'll have too, you can we'll never have too much garlic for you okay so i'm just going to give this like a little rough chop and then we are going to get this into the skillet. So what do I want to know about Shaquille? What that what what don't that I know? Don't, that you don't what know. don't I know about you? Well tell our audience about you. Um I'm 25 years old. I am a twin. Um I work in home care, I work with senior citizens. Most of them had some type of dementia and Alzheimer's, so I work with them. I have a whole lot of compassion for older people. I love talking to older people. I've loved learning, um, you know, just learning about life through having conversations with people who have done it. So, um, I also dance, I sing. My mom had me in plays, had me in production companies. I was in a lot of stuff growing up. Okay, so how, how old were you when I put you in dance? Six years old when we first started. Yeah, six years old. And we only did tap. We started off with tap and then gradually as we got older, my mom introduced us and put us into more different genres of dance. So it was tap and it was hip hop and jazz and modern and African and God, it was praise. We did it all. You did it all, right? Mime and church. You did everything. Same choir. You're going to use this for the cheese. I'll get you to grate okay. the cheese. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So Shaquille knows his way a little bit around the kitchen. So we are, so I put you in dance. I thought that it was good to be, um, to put you in things early so that creatively mm -hmm. you can see what you like. But sometimes as a parent, I think that when, when a, a child doesn't like something and you still keep them in there, I don't know if it's a good idea or a bad idea. Um, was it ever a time that you felt like while wow, I had you in dance that you didn't want to dance anymore? No, not until I got older and grown. Not okay. until I got grown and it had nothing to do with my mom making me. It was more so of me taking a, you know, having a, my own volition to, to dance and to do whatever I wanted to do and how I wanted to spend my time. So it wasn't until I got grown where I, I felt like I needed a break from it. How long did you take a break? Um, five, but 
four or five years, I believe. I just started back dancing this year. And I'm like super excited because I was on his back for so long. I think as a parent, I, I felt like I spent and invested so much in your life as far as creatively. And then for you guys to be like, well, Dominique stopped dancing early, I guess when he wanted to start playing football. But I wanted you guys to dance and not to stop because I just felt like if you stopped early, you would never know how great you could become. Right. So you are a phenomenal dancer and I'm so glad that you are back dancing. Remember, um, I think my favorite dance recital is when you guys did The Lion King and you were mm -hmm. Simba. I just looked at that show last. That was like the best show. I just looked at that. Remember that everybody kept coming to Dominique and they thought Dominique was you? Yeah. And they were asking him for his autograph, autograph. and all those girls were coming and and uh, asking him for his autograph and he had to say, oh, that was my twin brother, that wasn't me. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. Men were coming up to you, shaking your hand. Like that was, cool. that was really was cool. That was my favorite show because of the work put into it, all the work that was put into it. We practiced and rehearsed for months. At the time, we had to audition for character parts. Um, so I'm going to interrupt you for a second. I'm going to just put these shrimp in. This is about a pound and a half of 26 to 30 count. I didn't go, usually I go like a little larger, like the 15 to 20 or 16 to 20, but this is good. I'm going to add a little Old Bay seasoning to the shrimp and garlic. You, okay. yeah, just a little seafood seasoning. So you actually had to, um, you still dance as well as having asthma. So talk about that. Was that a huge challenge? It was a huge challenge growing up because, like I said, my mom had us in everything. So imagine being in everything and being. It, it being 10 times harder for you to breathe and be able to execute everything that you needed to. So it was difficult at first, but then as you keep practicing for some reason, I don't know what it is. I know it has a lot to do with muscle memory and how you breathe and how learning how to breathe on stage and okay. performing mm -hmm. that's, it has a lot to do with it. So it was a challenge when I was younger, but as I got older and continued to do it, it became a little bit easier. Easier, okay. Yeah, because I don't think you had as many asthma attacks as you did when you were a kid. No, no, that was, that was a lot. So all I'm doing is scooping out the middle, guys, um, just to make sure. But you don't want to scoop too far out of the middle because you want to still be able to house all the potato and whatever else you're putting in. One thing about twice baked potatoes, you can be creative and put whatever you like in this. You can just do total veggies. Um, sometimes I like spinach and uh, artichoke and, and you know, just different things in here. You can really saute some veggies up and stuff them in here if you want cheese or if you don't want cheese. You can still make this a whole entire meal with a, with a company with a salad is, is always really, really great. All right, so um, some of the challenge, what were some of the other challenges that you had? Um, growing up with 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 me with you yeah let's talk about our relationship um did you was it a challenge it wasn't a challenge was it it wasn't um, <laughs> no i'm kidding no it wasn't uh, thank you i think it became a challenge for everybody when i became a little bit older like 13 14 um you know, everybody goes through adolescence and body starts changing and stuff. So it was a lot of changes that was happening that I could not. I didn't feel comfortable talking to you okay. about at the time. And because of the lifestyle that I chose, well, not not even chose, but the lifestyle that I am, I'm gay. So there was a lot of secrets. There was a lot of hiding. There was a lot of confiding other people versus in having the relationship, building on our relationship so I could feel as comfortable coming to you and having a dialogue with you instead of right. going outside. Um, so just feeling like I was just by myself a lot. And I, I can only imagine as a, a teenager that that had to be tough because as a being heterosexual, of course, a mom 
And that, I'm sure dad too is going to, a parent is going to want their child to be heterosexual. And um, one of the things, and one of the things being a Christian that I know is I chose to love my son instead of being super concerned. Maybe concerned is not the right word. Being super judgmental about him being homosexual. So I chose to be in a place where we build upon our relationship now because of all the secrets and things that, you know, kids don't tell their parents. Some people have issues with their kids not telling them that they smoked weed or that they did um, use pills or use drugs of any sort. Mm -hmm. um, and ours was that my son was gay. And that wasn't the worst thing in the world. I'm so glad that it wasn't my son has cancer or he has a terminal illness of some sort. And him being gay is a choice. And it was a choice that he definitely had um, for himself. And being a parent um, of a young man, a handsome young man that is, is gay, uh, I try to focus in on just being his mom and loving on him. So I hope that helps someone. So I'm just cutting this potato in half. That was weird, right? Like, oh yeah, my son's right. gay, and then now, here we go. <laughs> now here we are with the potato. <laughs> no, we're goofy in this family. We like to be silly. So I will say that when you said it was something that I chose, I don't remember the day I woke up and you said, said you were gay. I wanted to decide. I just always remember. And thanks for feeling. saying that because mm -hmm. a so. lot of times we don't. As a parent, we don't know the right words to say and and all that because being gay was wasn't a choice for you. It was just who you are. Mm -hmm. So thanks. That was a great and point. It's better to understand where your parents, the time where they grew up in, you know, and where the conversation was back then versus now it being so acceptive and everybody it seems like everybody's a little gay. Um, but it being everybody like, is not a little gay. It seems like it, but I'm saying it to say that you know it's better to understand than versus you blaming because there was a point in time that I blamed you for how you reacted to certain things, but you didn't know, and it's okay now me being an older me me being older and seeing like my mom didn't know she didn't have those type of tools, but it's never too long, never too late to learn and to grab your parent by the hand and y'all figure it out together. Yes. And know that it's just unconditional love, no matter. And what. we are still figuring it out together, mm -hmm. as a, a as because you are an adult now, yeah. and we're just figuring it out together. And again, I'd rather just love on you and figure it out together than to not have you in my life and right. and whatever my belief system is. And um, one thing, one thing that I do want to say is my belief system is still my belief system, and I, my convictions are still my convictions. However. This is what, this is your life, and it's not mine. Right. So I have to let you, I have to let God be God and let you decide whatever you want to do. Right. Because a lot of people grow up, especially in a church, unfortunately, homosexual, and they don't tell their wives, and we, that's a whole nother subject for another day, and that's very painful, I'm sure. A whole nother subject. Be quiet. Okay. <laughs> That's a whole nother subject, you know, so however. But if we was to have those conversations, that's why I feel, and me and my mom have, have had these type of dialogues all the time. I feel like it's very, very important for us to have these type of conversations with our families while the child is growing up. So it won't be so, the child wouldn't feel so, so bad or ostracized when it comes up. It wouldn't be such a taboo conversation. Just as well as sex is in the church. That's it's true. So, it's so taboo, but it's such it's a part of God. It's a part of nature. It's a part of life. But yes. you know, it shouldn't be shunned upon. It shouldn't be you know. I was saying that we have. I'm very. It's very imperative that we have the conversations that we do as at a younger age, while the child is at is younger. Mm -hmm. So when they get older, it's not such a. It's a not su surprise or the, the but child how does is, is so much it's so, it's so much easier than for the child to come to you and to have to talk to you and not feel as judged not feel as judged I don't know I hear you but I don't know if it's ever a good time That's I good just 
I don't I think that we should have conversations earlier because mm -hmm. it makes it a lot easier but I think that God allows things to happen when they're organically supposed to happen because I don't know if I would have been as receptive if I haven't if I didn't go through some of the lessons and experiences that I had to go through I don't know if I would have been as receptive because sometimes when you are young and zealous in the Lord and you you know, you're like, no, this is the way it's supposed to be. This is the way. But this is my story. Now you have to live your story. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So I'm going to um, ask you to smash this up. And I'm going to pour. This is just butter and milk and the rest of the garlic that was in the pan drippings from the shrimp. Put this back here. Gotta put some muscle in it. Alright, so with that, I have a house season. It just has some garlic, onion powder, uh, some um, white pepper, uh, black pepper, and some salt. I'm gonna put that in there. Go ahead, keep mixing away. I like to add a little bit of Parmesan or Reggiano cheese. Just a little. And I like to add lots of sour cream instead of lots of milk. So just keep mixing away. Mm -hmm. So that's going to uh, help. Instead of using milk, I don't like to just make it so milky. So you have your butter in there. And this is going to be more smashed. It doesn't have to be whipped. If you like whipped, you can always whip it. And then this is at the time where you will kind of taste it. Just to see, taste it for seasoning. <coughs> Sorry. Thank you. This is when you would taste it for seasoning. So. Actually, I think it's good. I was going to add some more. No, why not? But it's good now this is where the magic happens I like to put in some green onion which I'm going to chop up some soon but I like to put some cheese in this mixture and this is pepper jack so when I do it I'm going to help you a little bit I know you was doing it but I like to put some muscle in it it helps me just to bind everything together Because I like I cheese. Can smell garlic. You smell the garlic, right? And it's not as that garlic, the elephant garlic isn't as pungent. So I, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Now we're gonna move these up. What I usually like to do, I'm gonna give you this. Mm. I usually like to put like three shrimp in before I mix the shrimp in here. So at least I know people got shrimp in every in every one. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to chop a little bit of this green onion. I like green onion in here. Even some of the bottoms too. I like the tops and the bottoms in it. Okay, that's good enough. Some green onion in it for mm -hmm. color. And, and as I get older and a little bit of parsley with the kitchen a little bit, um, not as much as you, but I know that I want to see color on my plate. Yeah, you want to see some color, so right? I know why people put, add different herbs and peppers and stuff just for more so coloring than taste. And all I say is experiment because some things I don't always do good, and then some things I I do great. But mm -hmm. I'm it's still always trial and error. Tell them the time that my mom. My mom first um, made these spice baked potatoes because she wanted to make something. My mom is a, was an a excellent cook and she wanted to make these potatoes like I did. And when she made them, she just overdid it because she tried to make them better than me. She tried. She was so <laughs> like, oh, you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make it better. Yes. That was, that she was wanted her to energy. Make, her energy. Yeah, was. that was her energy. Oh, okay. She think hers is good. Mine's going to be better. No, right. So this is just uh, some curly parsley. Oh my 
get why that stuff out of it. Well, it's always better to have fresh, but why is it, like I, I see a lot, because I watch a lot of YouTube videos and they require fresh. Because you can smell it, it's fresh, it's not sitting on a shelf somewhere, and you always want to eat something that's just fresh, right? Right. Like I do anyway. So I put a little parsley in it, I reserve just a little to sprinkle on the okay. top. Yeah, so now we're ready. All right, cool. So, let's get another spoon, can you? Because I used that one. And we are just, all we're going to do is we are going to scoop out some of this mixture into the potatoes with the shrimp. Like so. Do you want to um, give me a handshake? Oh, you took my spoon. That oh, was that was just, I'm sorry, that was your spoon. All right, let's put it here. So I like to scoop out at least three shrimp in each one because I like to make sure somebody at least got the shrimp, a shrimp in there right. and just not all potato. So you can do this with any type of like meat? Any kind of meat. You can, I've done it with uh, leftover tacos. Uh, I've done it with, um, Mostly with shrimp, crab meat if you want. I know you guys see me use a lot of crab meat and shrimp all the time, but I just really, really like it. All right. That one was got Then I usually put the rest of the shrimp in here. And kind of mix it in. And then we scoop it out. So I will... Scoop one out. I'll do one and show you how it looks, supposed to look. And then we'll do the rest and come back. Mm. So we My just pile favorite. it. We just pile it really, really high. You want to do one, Shaq? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just looking at you. I'll pile it really high. Why not? This is a meal in itself. Yeah, so you just need like a salad. A salad. And a nice glass of wine or Kool-Aid. <laughs> do people still do people still drink Kool-Aid? Yeah, uh, believe it or not. Oh, I didn't know they still made it. <laughs> yeah, the government still makes Kool-Aid. So you can see, and then I'll let him finish doing that. And this is what it looks like before we put it in the oven. I put more cheese on top and I let, let it bake in the oven until everything is just heated through because everything's already cooked. And then I sprinkle a little parsley. So this is how it looks before it goes in the oven. And then we will show you how it looks when it comes back out. Why do you feel like it's, it may not be, it's never a good time to really kind of come out and have that dialogue or the earlier, not the better? Um, I think I said I said that I think that things should happen organically. Oh, organically. Yes, that's what I meant. If I didn't say it like that, I I think that things need to happen organically. Where if if you told me that you were gay when you were thirteen, when you realized you were gay, I don't think I would have been as receptive of it because I hadn't had enough experiences in my life for it. for that. Mm -hmm and enough education so it's always like everybody else's but not mine mm -hmm. that's okay and i'll support you right. but i don't want that to happen to me mm -hmm. and it happened in you know but it didn't happen to me it happened in our family mm -hmm. and i couldn't take things as personal as i couldn't take things as personal i couldn't take things personal if I had taken it personal, it would have meant that it was about me and this was about you. Right. So I needed to make it about you. So organically, I needed things to happen the way they did. Um, yes, talk earlier. Yes, uh, I'm gonna put this in the oven. Okay. Um, I think we have more education now. I think we have a lot more education now than we did, when than we ever did. So I think that it is important for families to talk and be open about it. I know mm -hmm. people that don't, and I've heard of people that don't speak to their loved ones or they don't have relationship with their loved ones because of it. But 
um, whatever, if you told me you were uh, another religion, I don't want to name any particular one, but you told me you were another religion, some people don't speak to their families because of that, mm -hmm. or their children because of that. That's your story, and right. I have to let my story be mine, and yours be yours, and let God be God, and let him deal with, with us the way he needs to deal with us, individually. The reason why I ask that is because I feel like we need to have those conversations early on because kids go to school, kids get bullied, and there's a type of dialogue and maturity that's not in the, within those conversations. And I feel like if we start early and treat the conversation with compassion, empathy, love, understanding, then we can build upon that and then the child can go out in the world and know that there's other people outside of heterosexual, homosexual, there's transgender people, and it's becoming more accepted. And you want to be, well, I want to raise my family as such a family where everybody's know that nobody's different. We all gonna end up in a box. We all gonna, you know, so we're, we hold on End to up in a box meaning we all have to live and we all have to die. Yes, okay. but we're gonna end up, whether cremated or in the coffin, in the ground, so nobody's and nobody's up here in my head nobody's is no hierarchy type of situation okay so i treat every i try and i and i fall out every day but i try to treat everybody on the same level level headed just yeah. but it's level. funny because certain people we want to be treated a certain kind of way black people want to be treated with respect but then we can't laugh at somebody else that may have some type of disability Mm -hmm. Or gay people may be some kind of what you know a, a particular way, um, or choose a particular lifestyle. But then we can't fault anybody else's lifestyle, right. if you will. So you know they and I have been and white people can't that was treat the situation us. Situation for me because I was hold on. I, I want to mm -hmm. make this point: white people um, cannot treat others a certain kind of way and expect things to happen for them as well. So, I mean, we all are in this together. We all have to live in this world together. I think that the main point that I want to, I do want to make is that God is love. And even me being a Christian, I'm saying we have to learn how to love on people, whether they are obese, whether they are um, um, homosexual, whether, whether they're heterosexual, um, whether they, we just have to love on people, whether they're black, white, or yellow, or other. We have to learn how to love each other in this world. So that's my main uh, message that I, I want to say about, about you know, this conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Those are in the oven. I just want to tell you I love you. Love you too. All right. We want to show a picture of how everything looks in just a bit. We are going to taste these puppies. I should stop calling them puppies. They look really, really good and creamy. Thanks for helping me make these, Shaq. You're welcome. Mmm, really, really good. Nice and creamy. These will always be my favorite. Do you like the garlic? These shrimp are nice. I love the garlic. I think the garlic makes the dish. Really good. Cut the pie later with some ice cream, right? Mm -hmm. Five. Mm -hmm.